Hi, this is Pastor Jimmy. God bless you and keep you. Uh, today's words of God that the Lord wants us to share is the book of Isaiah uh, chapter 14. Yes, it's very, uh, it's an amazing chapter and also it's a beautiful chapter that talks about um, destruction of evil empire. Yes. Because our God is just and righteous, yes, uh, the judgment is the good thing, yes. And it will come. And it always comes. In unexpected time. For those who are opposing God and those who are ridiculing God. And uh, especially for those who actively do evil things towards others and also himself or herself. And our mighty God is determined to do that. And this chapter is a chapter that proclaims it and reveals that. You ready? Let's get it. Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 1. The Lord will have compassion on Jacob. Once again, he will choose Israel and will settle them in their own land. Aliens will join them and unite with the house of Jacob. Nations will take them and bring them to their own place. And the house of Israel will possess the nations as manservants and maidservants in the Lord's hand, in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. On the day, Lord gives you relief from the suffering and turmoil and cruel bondage. You will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. So, this is actually a prophecy against the king of Babylon. But Babylon here doesn't simply represent geographical things. Uh, in here, uh, God is speaking to us metaphorically that the Babylon itself is evil empire. See, We're not talking about, once again, we're not talking about geographical locations or historical facts. But this is a spiritual language that the Lord wants us to hear. Uh, so, king of Babylon here? Yes, it's about uh, Satan. Yes, it's about uh, the one who appears in Luke chapter 4 that confronts Jesus. And he thinks that he is uh, uh, the prince of the whole world. Right? He think he was king. But who's Jesus? Yes, he's, he's king of kings. Uh, he's a Messiah. So Jesus, as God, as our mighty Father God intended, yes, he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to us to become Messiah, to become a deliverer. From who? Yes, from the evil itself, from the evil empires. From here, in Isaiah chapter 14, from Babylon itself. Yes. So God is saying to you and I, if you are a believer, if you are the one who hold on to God, which means Israel. Israel means Isra, holding on to El. God of only one and only God, Creator, Israel, one who holds on to God, holding on to God. If you are holding on by faith, not just with your lip service, but with the lifestyle, God will deliver you. Don't worry. He will let you revive for the glory of God. Amen? Yes. God has decided. So please, if you are living the life of righteous and uh, what is just and right according to intention of God, do not lose your heart. Don't lose your faith. Keep it up. Keep, you know, keep up the fight. And be encouraged. Amen? Because judgment, judgment from God is upon on our head. Yes. And God will deliver us from all the evil. And save you for the glory of God. Amen. Yes. I believe that. That's why we 
proceed uh, from uh, LA to Mexico, Brazil, uh, Bolivia, now Argentina. Uh, soon, uh, we're going to uh, Korea del Sur, right? South Korea, uh, to rebuild God's intention for the glory of God. Yes, to revive the church of God. Then from there, God will send us to other places, wherever God wants us to go. Yes. So today, I want you to know, if you are the one who holding on to God, if you're keeping that faith as a gift from God, do not lose your heart. Amen? And proceed. On the day of the Lord gives you relief from the suffering and turmoil and cruel bondage, bondage, you will take up his taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressors has come to an end. See, see it with the faith. How his fury has ended. The Lord has broken the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, which in anger struck down peoples with unceasing blows. And in fury subdued the nations with relentless aggression. All the lands are at rest and at peace. They break into singing. Even the pine trees and the cedars of Lebanon exert over you and say, Now that you have been laid low, no woodsman comes to cut us down. The grave below is all Esther. Me to meet you at your coming. It rouses the spirits of the departed to greet you. All those who are leaders in the world, it makes them rise from their thrones. All those who are kings over the nations, they will all respond. And they say to you, you also have become weak as we are. You have become like us, which is Babylon, king of Babylon. We thought like you are the one who's prosperous. We thought that you are already made. But look at you, man. All those prideful things you said, things you have shown, where are they? Now we realize it's a nothing. Because you were too proud. You thought you had it. You thought you were king or king. But now, God is revealing the truth that you are nothing. You are nothing but evil. Hallelujah. All your pomp has been brought down to the grave along with the noise of your harps. Maggots are spread out beneath you and worms cover you. Remember, the one of the high angel. In book of Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11 and down. He thought he was even king of angels. Mightiest angel. But he was kicked out from kingdom of God. Why? Because he wanted to revolt against God and he wanted to put his position higher than God. So he, he proclaimed that, like, I will become greater and higher than maker himself. And God was watching him until the certain extent. Then God pulled him out and cast him down along with following angels, like one third of angels. Yes, the devil himself, the Satan was kicked out by God. And God is talking about that in this verse. Because he had, when God created him, 
God gave him this amazing gift, spiritual harp, spiritual musical talent, which is so he can be a leader to praising God. But with the talent that God has given, with the gift that God has given, he used it against God. That's why in verse 11, all your pomp has been brought down to the grave along with the poise of your harps. Maggots are spread out beneath you. You worms and worms cover you. Unceasing death. How you have fallen from heaven, O oh, morning star. Well, I'm reading you uh, New International, uh, NIV, right? Uh, but if you read original King James Version, instead of O oh, morning star, it says O oh, Lucifer. Yes. So a lot of people say the name of the Satan is, is Lucifer. And many people... Uh, say that. But regardless their name or not, it doesn't matter. And according to what Jesus says, I mean, Jesus doesn't really call him Lucifer, but Jesus simply says, uh, the serpent, uh, or the snake. Jesus doesn't even give him the name. They say, uh, devil, Satan. Why? Because he was already became lower than the child of God. So, what's the big deal about giving the name? So, we can call the same name as Jesus calls. Our Lord called him Satan, so we call him Satan. Devil. Old snake. Old serpent. The fallen one. He doesn't deserve anything more than that. Correct? You have been cast down to the earth. You who once lay low the nation, you said in your hearts, this is evil intent. So be careful that none of us would say such a thing like this. This is what devil said. This is what Satan said. This is determination of the evil. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. You see? Any spiritual being, difference between spiritual beings and animals. A spiritual being have a will, has a will, yes. When you decide certain matter, like I will do this and I, I, I will do such a thing, only spiritual being can do that. Animals don't do that. Animals don't say, well, you know what, I will uh, go to McDonald's and after that I will uh, come back and uh, take a nap. And I'll... No, no, they only uh, move just with their senses, but they do not use will, you see. So when you decide, whatever you decide, if it is for the glory of God, yes, you are being obedient and you are living the life that God wants you to live. But if you say, I will, but position yourself higher than God and whatever decision-making process that you're going through, then you are in danger of putting yourself before God, you see? How do we truly worship God? See, we worship God. Only one and only true way to worship God is put God first. Not you first. But devil, uh, he simply made it himself priority than God. And God was watching him for quite some time. God has, I'm sure God has given him chance to repent and come back to God. But he... He intentionally decided to go against God and revolt. And he, he, he even uh, tried to portray himself like God. That's why he says, I will put my throne higher than the throne of God. 
Stupid, huh? Those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate. Is this a man who shook the earth and made the kingdom travel? The man who, okay, when he says man, Isaiah chapter 14 is called a dual prophecy. God portrays this actual historical fact in Babylonian thing. But with this, God put his, uh, the plan, eternal plan and historical facts within the words of God. So when God speaks, speaketh through the Isaiah 14, it portrays spiritual history in the same time. That's why the wisdom of God is amazing. It's, it's overwhelming. We cannot fathom the wisdom of God because we are such a limited being. But through Holy Spirit, God opened our spiritual eyes and ears so we may truly understand the words of God by being led by Holy Spirit. That's why the Jesus is ultimate key. He's the one who holds the key over heaven and earth, right? That's why God says all the authority on heaven and earth has given to Jesus. So when you become disciples of Jesus Christ and live the life of obedience every day, you get to understand the words of God, yes. It's beautiful. Let me, let me go on continuously. The man who made the words, the word a desert, who overthrew its cities and would not let his captives go home. Oh, not th one thing again, this is about uh, the battle between the angels. All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out of your tomb like a rejected branch. Wow. So even though it's dead but cannot die, it's in eternal condemnation for the evil, for the Satan, for the devil. But you are cast out of the tomb like a rejected branch. You are covered with the slain, with those pierced by the sword, those who descend to the stones of the pit like a corpse trampled underfoot. You will not join them in burial, not even allowed to die. For you have destroyed your land and killed your people. The offsprings of the wicked will never be mentioned again. Prepare a place to slaughter his sons for the sins of their forefathers. They are not to rise to inherit the land and cover the earth with their cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus was sent by God and he broke the skull of the Satan. Amen. I will cut off the Babylon, her name and survivors, her offsprings and descendants, declares the Lord. I will turn her into place for owls and into swampland. I will sweep her with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord Almighty. Wow. I would just use a broom and just dust it off. Hey, let's clean the house. Hallelujah. That's why he appointed me and you <laughs> to clean the house. Yes, clean the whole city and nation and whole world for the glory of God. That's called revival, amen? Yes. The Lord Almighty has a sworn. Surely as I have a plan, so it will be. Hallelujah. And as I have a purpose, so it will stand. Amen. I will crush the Assyrian in my land. On my mountains, I will trample him down. His yoke will be taken from my people. So this um, include not just Satan and devil, but everyone who follow the evil will perish with it. I will crush the Assyrian in my land. On my mountains, I will trample him down. His yoke will be taken from my people and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the plan determined for the whole world. Hallelujah. Whole world include you and me. Amen. This is the 
hands stretched out over all nations. Amen. For the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? This oracle came in the year of King Ahaz died. Do not rejoice, all your Philistine, that the rod that struck you is broken. From the root of that snake will spring up a viper. Its fruit will be darting, venomous serpent. Wow. The poorest of the poor will find pasture. And the needy will lie down in safety. But your root I will destroy by famine. It will slay your survivors. Wail, O gate. Howl, O city. Melt away, all you Philistine. A cloud of smoke comes from the north. And there is not staggler in its ranks. What answer shall be given to the envoys of that nation? The Lord has established Zion with Mount of God, and in her he's and in her his afflicted people will find refuge. Hallelujah. So please. But once again, do not misunderstand this to a nationalism. Okay? It's not about battle between Palestine and Israel, the geographical battle that's going on. You know, it's not about that, all right? You know, many people uh, try to bring uh, a corrupt intention of God, the Bible as it's a national religion. No, it's not, okay? Uh, God never mentioned about the Israelite as a geographical fact. Of course, even though it's in the history uh, as Jesus came to you and I to represent true intention of God. What did Jesus say? When Holy Spirit comes in, yes, to us, we will become living temple, which is like Jerusalem. And when you become new Jerusalem, a new creation, God said, proceed, Judea, Samaria, till end of earth. And let people be saved. Let people become free in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who's oppressed from evil, from Babylon itself. So this is metaphorical speaking, okay? It's not about nationalism. So don't get confused in it. This battle belongs to God. And this is about against the evil. Once again, metaphorically speaking, Babylonian Empire still exists. And it means empire that Satan thinks it's his. <laughs> so our battle is not against flesh, flesh and blood. It's not against man. But that's what the book of Ephesians chapter 6 clearly says. But our battle is against the evil. Hmm. But as God promised, according to the book of Isaiah chapter 14, Yes, God has decided. And this battle, this war already has won. Amen? Yes, and Jesus is our captain. So we must trust promises of God. And Jesus says, My Father, which is our mighty Father God, has given all the authority in heavens and earth to Jesus. And Jesus commanded me and you to take a responsible about gospel. So, we take our own cross, responsibility of the gospel, and raise the banner of Jesus Christ, and set people free for the glory of God, and teach them everything that Jesus has told us, and live the victorious life. Amen? Yes. Let us remember the life that we are living. It's precious life. It's a gift from God. So let us not waste this life, but let us keep up the faith and fight the good fight till the end. Amen? And we will experience this absolute promise is being revealed in our own lives in daily basis. God bless you and keep you. Shalom.